When I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to remember one story more than any other. Even though that spirit bear moment was powerful, I, I don't think I'll ever have another experience like I did with these leopard seals. Leopard seals, since the time of Shackleton, have had a bad reputation. They've got their, you know, that Riley smile on their mouth. They've got those black, sinister eyes and those spots on their body. They look positively prehistoric and a bit scary. And tragically, in 2004, a scientist was taken down and drowned, and she was being consumed by a leopard seal. And people are like, we knew they were vicious. We, we, we knew they were, and, and so people love to form their opinions. And that's when I got a story idea. I want to go to Antarctica, get in the water with as many leopard seals as I possibly can, and give them a fair shake. Find out if they really are these vicious animals or if they're misunderstood. So this is that story. Oh, and they also happen to eat happy feet. And <laughs> as a species, as humans, we like to say, oh, penguins are really cute, therefore, you know, leopard seals eat them, and so leopard seals are ugly and bad. It doesn't work that way. The penguin doesn't know it's cute, and the leopard seal doesn't know it's kind of big and monstrous. This is just the food chain unfolding. They're also big. They're not these little harbor seals. They are 12 feet long, 1,000 pounds, and they're also curiously aggressive. You get 12 tourists packed into a zodiac floating in, in these icy waters, and a leopard seal comes up and bites the pontoon. The boat starts to sink. They race back to the ship and get to go home and tell the stories of how they got attacked. All the leopard seal's doing is, I mean, if you, you know, it's just biting a balloon. It just it sees this big balloon in the ocean. It doesn't have hands. It's going to take a little bite. The boat pops, and off they go. <laughs> so after five days of crossing the Drake Passage, we, isn't that beautiful? After five days of crossing the Drake Passage, we have finally arrived at Antarctica. I'm with my Swedish assistant and guide. His name is Goran Elma from Sweden, Goran. And he has a lot of experience with leopard seals. I've never seen one. So we come around the cove in our little Zodiac boat, and there's this monstrous leopard seal. And even in his voice, he goes, that's a bloody big seal, yeah. <laughs> and, and this seal is taking this penguin by the head, and it's flipping it back and forth. And the, it's, what it's trying to do is turn that penguin inside out so it can eat the meat off the bones. And, and then it goes off and gets another one. And so the leopard seal grabbed another penguin, came under the boat, the Zodiac, started hitting the hull of the boat. And we're trying to, we're trying to not fall in the water. And we sit down, and that's when Godan said to me, this is a good seal, yeah. It's time for you to get in the water. <laughs> And I looked at Yodan and I said to him, forget that. But I think I probably used a different word starting with the letter, letter F. But he was right. You know, he scolded me out and you know, said, you know, this is why we're here. And you proposed this stupid story to National Geographic. And now you've got to deliver. And you can't publish excuses. So with my, I had such dry mouth. Probably not as bad as now. But I was, had such, <laughs> such dry mouth. And my legs were just trembling. I couldn't feel my legs. I put my flippers on. I could barely part my lips. I put my snorkel in my mouth, and I rolled over the side of the Zodiac into the water. And this is the first thing she did. She came, she came racing up to me and engulfed my whole camera, and her teeth are up here and down here. And, but Godan, before I had gotten in the water, had given me amazing advice. He said, if you get scared, you close your eyes, yeah, and she'll go away. <laughs> So that's all I had to work with at that point. But I just started to shoot these pictures. So she did this threat display for a few minutes, and then the most amazing thing happened. She totally relaxed. She went off, she got a penguin, she stopped about 10 feet away from me, and she sat there with this penguin, the penguin's flapping, and she lets it go. The penguin swims towards me, takes off, she grabs another one, she does this over and over. And it dawned on me that she's trying to feed me a penguin. Why else would she release me? Release these penguins at me. And she, you know, after she did this four or five times, she swam by me with this dejected look on her face. You don't want to be too anthropomorphic, but I swore that she looked at me like this useless predator is going to starve in my ocean. So she... <laughs> so realizing I couldn't catch swimming penguins, she'd get these other penguins and bring them slowly towards me, bobbing like this, and she'd let them go. This didn't work. I was just, I was laughing so hard and, and so emotional that my mask was flooding because I was crying underwater just because it was so amazing. And so that didn't work. So then she'd get another penguin and try this ballet-like sexy display sliding down this iceberg <laughs> like this, and she would sort of bring them over to me and offer it to me. This went on for four days. This just didn't happen a couple of times. And then so she realized I couldn't catch live ones, so she brought me dead penguins. Now I've got... <laughs> now I've got four or five penguins floating around my head, and I'm just sitting there shooting away. 
And she would often stop and have this dejected look on her face and like, are you for real? Because she can't believe that I can't eat this penguin. Because in her world, you're either breeding or you're eating, and I'm not breeding, so. <laughs> and then that wasn't enough. She started to flip penguins onto my head. She was trying to force feed me. She's pushing me around. She's trying to force feed my camera, which is every photographer's dream. And she would get frustrated. She'd blow bubbles in my face. She would, you know, I think let me know that I was gonna starve. And, but yet she didn't stop. She would not stop trying to feed me penguins. And on the last day of, with this female where I thought I had pushed her too far, I got nervous because she came up to me. She rolled over on her back and she did this G deep guttural Jack Harper sound. This guk, 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 guk. And I thought, she's about to bite. She's about to let me know she's too frustrated with me. What had happened was another seal had snuck in behind me and she did that the threat display. She chased that big seal away, went and got its penguin, and brought it to me. And that wasn't the only seal I got in the water with. I got in the water with 30 other leopard seals, and I never once had a scary encounter. They're the most remarkable animals I've ever worked with, and same with polar bears. And just like the polar bears, these animals depend on an icy environment. And I get emotional, sorry. It's just, it's a story that lives deep in my heart and I'm proud to share this with you and I'm so passionate about it. Anybody want to come with me to Antarctica or the Arctic, I'll take you. Let's go. We've got to get the story out now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.